好的，下面我们进行第三部分的讲解。那么第三部分呢，就是四和六题。我们首先来看一下 TPO 十的第四道题。An effective, widely used marketing practice in the entertainment industry is entertainment merchandising. Entertainment merchandising is a form of marketing in which the brand or image from one product is also used to sell another. The practice of entertainment and merchandising often occurs in connection with movies and television shows, especially those associated with children. For example, the success of a popular children's television show may result in the marketing of toys. 这个地方啊，就解释了 what is entertainment merchandising. They are designed to look like characters in the show. Or the situation may be reversed when a children's television show is written to include characters that are based on already popular toys. So, from this child's television show and toy and this creation of this product relationship, we can see that entertainment merchandising. We look at this question. Using the examples from the lecture, explain the concept of entertainment merchandising. 所以这个地方让我们解释的呀，就是这样一个名词。所以我们来首先听一下 ，What is a lecture？ 我们一起来听一下听力。Now listen to a lecture from a marketing class. Okay, so I've actually got a few different examples of this. You know,、uh, when I was a kid, a character named Action Hero was really popular with my friends and me. We would always watch the Action Hero program on television every week. And and play games, pretending that we were as strong and powerful as he was. Then pretty soon we began seeing these small action hero figures in all the stores, and well, we all just had to have them. I mean, we'd been watching the television show for so long that it seemed only natural to want to own the toys too. Well. I finally grew up and left the action hero television program and toys behind,、uh, but now I have a seven-year-old daughter who watches television a lot and also likes to play with her toys. And lately, her favorite toy is a cute little baby doll with a big round face and lots of curly hair named Rosa. All my daughter's friends have Rosa dolls too, and they enjoy going to each other's houses to play with them. Then a few weeks ago, my daughter came running up to me, all excited, because she had just heard there was going to be a new television program on every week with the doll Rosa as the main character. So naturally, she and all her friends have begun watching the show, and it's already very popular, as popular as the toy doll. 听力听完了，大家有什么感受吗？其实最重要的呀是理解。理解呢，同时要注意记下一些 keywords， 这样就可以帮助啊，咱们在回答的时候有一个瞬间的回忆的这样一个过程。我们来参考一下这份答案，大家觉得如何 ？Entertainment merchandising is a marketing practice using the brand or image from one product to sell another。那么这个地方就给出了一个定义，我们一定要抓住一些关键词，在那个 reading material 里面就有体现。The professor uses two examples to illustrate this practice. The first example is that when he was a kid, his friends and he liked a character named Action Hero, and they always watched the Action Hero program on television and played games pretending to be the powerful hero. After a time, they started to see small hero figures in all the stores. 嗯，这样的玩偶就出现了。They all watched the TV show so long that it was natural they wanted to buy the toys. The second example is that his seven-year-old daughter and her friends like a cute little baby doll named Rosa. One day, his daughter told him that a new TV program with Rosa as the main character would show every week. Naturally, she and her friends all started to watch the television show, which was already popular, as popular as the toy doll. 嗯，这个地方啊，就用两个 examples 完全解释了 entertainment merchandising， 
你只有在理解的基础上啊，才会发现啊，是两种这种方式啊，一个是从这个电视节目到玩偶，就催生出一些周边产品，再就是从周边产品到 TV program， 所以是这两种 forms， 大家一定要注重理解。我们来看一下第十一套题的第四题，同样的，先阅读。Outsider art is a term used to describe art that is made by people who choose to live and work outside society. 嗯，这个地方就给出了一个比较明确的一个定义。What is outside art? The artists who produce this kind of art are called outsider artists, who work in isolation from other artists and have little or no formal artistic training. Because they do not learn conventional artistic techniques from teachers or other artists, outsider artists must invent their own ways of doing things. As a result of the unconventional methods that outsider artists often use, their work can look strange and not at all like traditional art to the observer. 那么这道题的要求啊，就是出现了这样一个人 ，Henry Darger。So you have to explain why he is considered as an outsider artist. 那么知道这个题目的要求以后呀，我们就一起来听一下听力。Now listen to part of a lecture in an art history class. All right, so let's consider the work of the outsider artist Henry Darger. Darger lived by himself in a tiny apartment in Chicago in the 1900s. He had no friends and spent all his spare time there alone, creating hundreds of paintings and drawings. He had never formally studied art, and kept his work completely private, so no one ever saw it or responded to it during his lifetime. And so, when you see Darger's work, you notice how unique it is. It doesn't remind you of anything you've ever seen before. It's very much his own. For example, one piece. It's a watercolor painting. In this piece, he illustrates a story about the adventures of seven children. But see, Darger had a really hard time drawing human figures, yet he managed to come up with his own rather unique solution for the problem. He simply cut out pictures of children from newspapers and magazines, and pasted them into his own painted illustration of trees, flowers, and grass. The results look、um, a little strange. Darger's picture looks more cluttered, more crowded with details than the pictures of other artists, because its entire surface is painted and there are no spaces left empty. It's also a lot longer than the pictures of most other artists, about nine feet long. 好的，听完了听力呢，咱们要注意有两件事情要做。第一个啊，要首先来解释一下 what is outsider artist. 那么接着来啊，咱们说一下这个 sample 是什么，就是怎么体现出它是一个 outsider artist. According to the reading passage, outsider artists work in isolation and don't get formal artistic training, and they also invent their own ways of doing things. Therefore, their work may look strange and can be very different from other artists. According to the professor. Henry Darger lived by himself, had no friends, and thus worked in isolation. Also, he never received any formal training, and his work is very unique. Darger had a hard time painting figures, but he managed to come up with his own method. He cut out pictures of children from newspapers and pasted them on the painting. So his painting looks a little strange. It's more cluttered and more crowded with details than other artists' paintings. Also, because the entire space is painted, Darger's painting is a lot longer than other artists. So these two steps, ah, we have completed this answer. Then we move on to the sixth question. First, let's look at the sixth question. 先审一下题。Using the points from the lecture, explain why researchers think that babies may feel empathy. 那么这个地方啊，我们就看一下这个题目的要求啊。首先啊，我们要听一段听力关于一个 lecture。那么这个 lecture 说的是啊 ，babies' behaviors。那么抓住了这样一些重点以后呀。
我们先一起来听一下听力，然后再参考一下答案。那么现在就开始播放听力。Listen to part of a lecture in a psychology class. Okay, we generally assume that babies can feel only very basic emotions like happiness or anger. That is, that babies just react to things that happen directly to them. However, some new research is suggesting that babies may be able to feel concern for others, to have empathy for others. Now, empathy is a complex emotion. It involves a baby relating to someone else's emotions, not just reacting to things happening directly to them. Let's talk about an experiment that may show that babies could be capable of feeling empathy. Okay. For the first part of the experiment, well,、um, we've always known that babies start to cry when they hear other babies crying, right? One baby in a room starts crying, and all the rest join in. We've always assumed that the other babies cried because they were reacting to the noise of the crying, that the noise itself was distressing. So, in the experiment, researchers played a tape recording, a tape of babies crying, to another baby. And sure enough, the baby started crying when he heard the sound of other babies crying. This was no surprise, of course, and the researchers assumed that the baby cried because of the noise. But the next part of the experiment was surprising. The researchers played the baby a tape of his own crying. Now it was just as noisy, so the researchers expected him to cry. However, this time the baby did not cry. He wasn't upset by the sound of his own crying. Why not? Well, maybe it wasn't the noise that had made him cry before when he heard other babies crying. In fact, maybe noise had nothing to do with it. It could be that the baby felt empathy for the other babies, and that was why he got upset when he heard them crying. The researchers concluded that it is indeed possible that babies feel empathy, concern for others. 好的，听力听完了呢，大家注意到啊，其实就是让咱们复述一段 lecture。那我们一定要学会抓一些关键的词和关键的步骤。The professor talks about an experiment testing babies' empathy. We all know that if one baby cries in the room, other babies in the same room will cry. Originally, we think it's because of the noise of the crying, which means baby is directly influenced by the noise rather than feel concern for other babies. But in the experiment, the researchers played a tap recording of a baby's cry to another baby. Then, of course, the other baby cries. Then the researchers played a tap recording of the baby's own crying. Which is equally noisy. However, the baby didn't cry. So, baby cried not because of the noise. It could be that the baby felt empathy for the other baby. Then researchers concluded that it's possible that babies feel empathy, concern for others. 所以这道题啊还是偏简单的，咱们只要抓住一些细节和步骤，还有这个实验前后的一些发现，还有总结，咱们这个答案就呼之欲出了。然后最后呢，我们来看一下第十一套的第六题。Using the points and examples from the lecture， 同样的 ，explain what unity and contrast are， and how they make interior design more effective。我们抓住了一些关键词啊。首先，我们要回答两个问题 ：What？ And how? 那么重要的关键词啊，就是 unity and contrast. And what are their roles in interior design? 那么就要通过我们的听力来知道了。那么首先呢，我们先来听一下听力。Listen to part of a lecture in an interior design class. So we're talking about interior design. Uh, specifically, the basic principles typically used in home and office decoration in the United States. Effective designs create a delicate balance between two things. You need unity, and you also need contrast, which is essentially a break in unity. 
Now, this might seem a little contradictory, but let me explain why we need both of these for an effective design. So for the first principle, we need unity in our design. And think of it as um, consistency. Well, an easy and very effective way to do this is by bringing together similar elements. A common example is by matching colors. You pick a color and use it for different parts of the room. Say you pick green, and then use a light shade of green for the walls and maybe a somewhat darker shade for the fabric on the sofa, and finally complement that with a matching green in the rug. When elements match, the room is unified and gives its residents a sense of order and comfort. Okay, but there is such a thing as too much unity. Remember, you need a balance of unity and contrast. If all you do is focus on unity, the result will be a boring room. So what do you do? Well, you apply the second basic principle of design, which is contrast. Contrast serves to disrupt or uh, break up the unity in places, but in a careful, intentional way. Um, well, let's continue using color as an example. To create contrast, color contrast, you need to abruptly change your color scheme once in a while. Uh, let's see, you could um, throw bright red cushions on your dark green sofa, for example. Contrast makes things stand out. The green will look even greener next to the red. So now your room is more interesting, not completely the same. But watch out, too much contrast is also dangerous just like too much sameness is. Too much contrast will make the room feel busy. 好的,听你听完了,我们也是注意啊,一定要抓住一些这个lecture里面的一些关键词。那么来复述一下这个lecture. In the lecture, the professor says an effective design is to balance unity and contrast. 那么统一和对照。an easy way to achieve unity is to bring together similar elements. A common practice is by matching colors. For example, we can pick green and use light shade green for the walls, dark shade green for the sofa, and green for the rug. When elements match, the room is unified and gives sense of order and comfort. But too much unity will make a room boring. So we need contrast to break the unity. Contrast Contrast serves to disrupt unity in a careful and intentional way. In order to create color contrast, we need to change colors now and then. For example, we could put light red cushion on the dark green sofa. Contrast makes things stand out Green will look greener next to the red, but too much contrast will make a room feel dizzy and chaotic. So an effective design must avoid too much unity and too much contrast. So this unity and contrast. unity contrast. What is unity and what is contrast? So actually, 在训练的时候呢，在听课的时候呢，也可以学着，哎，能不能把这节课一部分的老师的内容给复述出来？这样的能力可以循环的锻炼出来。那么，以上呢就是今天的全部内容了，非常感谢大家。